go to the word today, let's uh, begin in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house, to hear from you through your word, and uh, for us especially today to encourage our moms that they might be blessed on this very important day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we do want to say uh, thank you to our moms today. We honor you today. We're glad we can have a day like this. It's so very important. And we also recognize that uh, sometimes Mother's Day isn't always a happy day for everyone. It might be that maybe your mother is no longer with you, and so we, we understand that. Or maybe, uh, maybe you are uh, you know, estranged from your mother. Maybe it wasn't a good relationship in your past, or maybe you have a child that is wayward, and you're a mother, and this is a hard day, it's a Mother's Day, and Maybe you always wanted to be a mother, and, and that never was able to happen for you. So we recognize that there are many different issues when we come to a day like Mother's Day. But there's one thing I know. I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. There's one thing I know. Every one of you had a mother. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Don't you think? I know they say things are changing a little these days, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. Every one of you had a mother. Uh, and a father, by the way. So, um, so we do want to honor the moms. And, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about the origins of Mother's Day. And uh, Anna Jarvis loved her mother so much, she started a movement that culminates on a day like today. She loved her own mother so much that when her mother died and they had the memorial service, uh, Anna Jarvis gave out carnations to everybody in attendance because the carnation was her mother's favorite, favorite flower. And then she continued to work on a movement to, uh, to create a day like this. And finally, in 1914, Congress acted and uh, established a day for Mother's Day. President Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, signed it into law so that on the second Sunday of every May in perpetuity, uh, mothers would be honored and celebrated throughout the nation. And as I, I've been thinking about that, and I've I just been thinking about why, what, what is the reason for doing that. I don't mean, you know, we shouldn't. I'm just saying, think of the energy and the work and the effort it took to turn this into a national holiday uh, passed by Congress. They never do anything right anyway. So, I mean, uh, they got this one right. How, how could that happen? The, the Congress and the president all agreed on this one. But think of the work that went into making this day possible. It took a long time, but here we are. And so today, I know, moms, you will be uh, given a lot of gifts. This will be a great celebration. Maybe you've already had great things happen this morning, and uh, there'll be great dinners probably and great gifts and so forth. But I think you're going to be hard to beat uh, uh, this guy, dads, and the husbands, uh, Mike uh, Garassi. Turns out Mike Garassi, uh, for 30 years, wrote a letter to his mother every day for 30 years. Uh, 11,000 letters, snail mail, by the way, that he wrote to his mother every single day. That's quite a gift, quite a statement of affirmation, isn't it? But I think it's because, you know, we recognize that how, the importance of a mom, we recognize how hard it is to be a mom. Uh, I heard about one woman by the name of uh, uh, Barbara Weiser in Illinois who said one day she was driving with her little daughter in the car, she's about elementary school age, driving in the car with her daughter, and uh, she said to her, what do you want to be when you grow up? She said, I want to be an actress, I want to be a dancer, I want to be a model, I want to be a singer, and I want to travel the whole world. And she said, okay, but why not be a mom? She says, oh no, that's too hard to do, she said. <laughs> Well, I think there's a lot of truth in that, that it could be very hard to do. I want to examine today the power of moms, the depth of the love that you bring into our lives today to try to see if we can understand it at a, at a deeper level today. Because I believe that our moms have nurtured us in ways we don't even realize that there, there are sub, subliminal messages in our mind, subconscious relationships with our mother at a very deep level that we don't even remember, but that shape us in so many ways that we are today. Take a look at what Abraham Lincoln said about his mother. All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. 
I remember my mother's prayers, and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. Imagine one of the great figures of American history says that if it wasn't for his mother, he wouldn't have accomplished anything. He wouldn't have accomplished bringing a nation together after a civil war. He wouldn't have been able, he says, to to have stopped and ended slavery. He wouldn't have been able to uh, bring forth the Emancipation Proclamation. He would have never given the speech at the the Gettysburg Cemetery, the Gettysburg Address, and on and on we could go. He is basically saying all those accomplishments are due to his mother. That's the power of moms. And God even agrees with this. Take a look at this passage from Isaiah chapter 66, verse 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When God wants to show us his love and the kind of care he's going to give to us, to whom does he point? He points to you, mom. He points to you as the example of the kind of love he wants to give. You're the example. You're the paradigm. You're the template of what he is trying to do in our lives. What a great compliment. Can you think of any greater compliment than saying, I want to be like the moms. I'm going to comfort you like the moms do. That's what God says. We think about our moms today. We realize the depth of that relationship. A lot of it we don't realize because as uh, when we were, she protected us in the womb and kept us safe. When we were young children, mom kept us safe, protected us, made sure we ate the right things, that we didn't damage and hurt ourselves, that we hung with the right people, did the right things at every level. When we were little tiny babies, we don't even remember it, but as she held us and gazed into our eyes with a smile and a love that just spoke volumes of kindness and mercy and grace and acceptance and love into our very soul. We don't remember it. We're not conscious of it, but it's there. It's there. And it's buried deep within our soul. And our mothers have cared for us. They have rescued us. They have forgiven us. They've encouraged us. They've taught us. They've taught us, you know, emotional intelligence, how to be a lady, how to be a gentleman, how to say yes, sir, and no, ma'am, how to say thank you, how to say please, how to be fair, how to be kind, how to be a listener, how to stand up for yourself, how to give, how to serve, how to love. I mean, the list is endless, is it not, of all the emotional intelligence they've taught us? And then they've taught us through their own lives, their own actions, their own words. They've taught us to be a Christ follower. They've taught us to be godly people. All you have to do is watch them. And the message is loud and clear, isn't it? There's also something called behavioral genetics. Behavioral genetics. They've given things to us that we're not even really aware of. By that, I mean there are traits that they never even taught us. They're just genetic that your mother gave you. We know this because they have studied children who have been born as twins, separated at birth from their mother and from each other. And when they went back and they studied these children who have now grown to be adults, and they went back and studied their mother, they found that there are certain traits of how they smile, the gestures, the way they walk, the way they tilt their head, are all related to their mom. It's through nature, not nurture. But mom, you've done both. You've taught us through nurture. You've taught us through nature. You've given us so much of your own gifts. But not only have we been changed, not only have we been touched, but you were changed too. You really were. You were never the same after the birth of your children, right? You were never the same. You weren't quite the same person. Um, We know that oxytocin is a hormone that surges when you become pregnant, and especially in labor and lactation. It just surges in the body. And this oxytocin changed you. 
as a young mother. One of the things it did, among many things, is it improved your hearing. It improved your hearing in so many ways. But what it did was, when you were, before you were a mom, the alarm clock could go off and you might not even hear it. People would say things you wouldn't even notice. But now when you're a mom and oxytocin is kicked in, you hear a baby's cry at the other end of the house, don't you? It'll wake you in the middle of the night. You could be in a dead sleep, but you never really are. And you'll hear that baby cry. Not only will you hear the baby cry, you'll understand what the cry is about. You'll understand what it means. You'll be able to interpret the cry. You'll know, ah, a diaper needs to be changed. He's hungry. She's uncomfortable. She's lonely. She's scared. You know what it all means. And so you were changed. You were never the same. You, you'll know what I mean when I say this. When you first gave birth and they placed that little baby in your hands, You looked at that baby, and you said to yourself, I can't believe I can love any human being as much as I love this child. Right? Isn't that what happened to you? You were shocked. You couldn't believe it. You've lived all these years in relationships, in your families and with others, and you've never experienced anything quite like this. So you were changed. Your children have been changed. They have been transformed. You have made an indelible mark on their lives. And we're not even really fully aware of it. We're not even fully cognizant of it. Words do not describe. In fact, my great frustration today is that I cannot really tell you everything I want to say to you about the impact you have made. But maybe Mark Merrill, as he talks about his mother, he was a championship wrestler. Maybe Mark Merrill, maybe his story can help us unpack it. Take a look at the screen. My mom would be at all my sporting events. Let's say I was playing football, okay? My mother would be on the sidelines, and if the play on the field started going one way, my mother would run along like, Mark, get him, get him! I'd be like, oh my gosh. I'd get in the huddle with the other guys, they go, Mark, is that your mother? I go, no, I never saw her before in my life. (laughs) The greatest gift my mother ever gave me, she believed in me. I have overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe I was kept here for a reason. You show me your friends, I will show you your future. How do I know this? I hung out with losers and I became the biggest loser of them all because I gave up everything I dreamt about as a little boy because of who I chose to surround myself with. My friends would drive me home at two, three, four in the morning. We'd be drunk and high, laughing in the car. We'd pull up in front of my house in New York. they go, Mark, Mark, the light's on. I go, oh man, my mother's up. See, my mom wouldn't go to bed until she knew her son was still alive. I'd walk in, she'd say, hi Mark, how was your night? I go, it was good mom, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, Mom, I'm tired. I'm just going to go to bed. She goes, Mark, I haven't seen you all day and all night. Can I please talk to you? I said, man, just leave me alone. You bug me. I would slam my bedroom door on the one person who believed in me. I was on a worldwide tour when we were wrestling overseas in Japan. After my wrestling match, I went upstairs in my hotel room and I fell asleep. There was a knock at my door at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got out of bed, and I looked through the safety window, and I could see it was a Japanese promoter. So I opened the door, and he said, Mark, you need to call home. There's been an emergency. I went and got on the hotel room phone. I called back to the United States. I said, hey, what's going on? I said, Mark, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, just tell me what happened. All of a sudden, they started crying. They go, Mark, I can't tell you. I said, just say it. I said, Mark. Your mother died. I just threw the phone down. I ran out of my hotel room. I took the elevator to the lobby. When the doors opened up, I just ran out into the street. I mean, there was no cars. There was no people. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. 
And I walked down the middle of a street in Hiroshima, Japan, and I remember looking up and just saying, Mom, I am so sorry. I flew home for her funeral, and I was so nervous to walk up to her casket, so I just stood way in the back. And I kept looking from a distance, and I kept thinking to myself, Mom, please wake up. Please get up. And then I finally got the nerve to walk up to her. And as I got closer, I could see my mom for the first time. I mean, she was so beautiful. She, she was dressed in white. I mean, she looked like an angel. And I just stood over and I said, Mom, you are my hero. Everything I am, everything I hope to be was because of you. You loved me so much. You gave me a life. You're the only one that ever believed in me. How did I repay her? By getting drunk, by getting high, by getting stupid, by hanging out with losers? For what? All she ever wanted to do was talk to me. I wish I could talk to you now, Mom. I wish you could see what I'm doing. Why couldn't I have been a better son? We are defined by our choices. But if you surround yourself with people involved in drugs and alcohol and pills, it's a dead end. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to tell you I lived that life. It leads to broken hearts, broken relationships, broken dreams, and death. For what? To get high? If you have a mother or a father, when you go home, tell them how much you love them. See, my whole life was about being rich and famous. I had to be a millionaire. I had to win the race. I had to win the race to expense my marriage, my family, my friends for what? To be all alone in the world? I learned what is truly important, and that is how precious this gift of life is and our families and how quickly it can be taken away. See, I no longer live in time. I live in moments. See, it's not what's in your pocket that matters. It's what's in your heart that truly matters. Love, love is just a word until somebody comes along and gives it meaning. You, you're the meaning. That's the depth of a mother's love. That's the power of a mother's love. It has gone to the core of who you are, down deep into your soul, your subconscious. We have a, a visceral understanding of our mother's love and influence in our lives. A couple of weeks ago, I saw something on the news that when I saw it, I knew I had to share it with you today on Mother's Day. In the news was the story of a, of a British soldier by the name of Harry Bailingi. He had died at the age of 96, and so they were telling about his life. He'd been one of the, the last people to remember storming the beaches of Normandy in World War II. He remembered the events clearly. And he talked about them. He said how when they got off the, the, the Land Rovers and they, they landed on the beach, there were bodies floating in the water, shells falling, bullets flying, people dying. As they climbed the beaches, they, they found even more dead soldiers. And then he said, he said something that I, I don't think I'll ever forget. He said, and then there were those who had been wounded. And they were crying out in pain. And they were crying for their mothers. They were crying for their mothers. And I thought to myself as I watched it, I thought, why? Why would these big burly men, hardened by war, calloused by battles, why would they be crying for their mothers in their pain? It's because your mother has penetrated 
you at the deepest levels of your being, at a core level. No person has been more, has made a greater impression upon you than your mother because she gave you birth and she nurtured you and she's been your cheerleader. And so it's because of that depth of that relationship that we come together today. We honor you today and we say thank you. From the bottom of our heart, we say thank you. And would you please accept our humble effort to say thank you today because you deserve so much more. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for them as the gift that they have been in our life, how they have shaped us, how they've loved us, how they've rescued us, trained us and developed us, and been godly examples of faith and how to live. So Lord, bless them on this day. If our mother isn't with us today, bless her memory to us. But bless the mothers gathered here today and all through the nation that they'll know how important they are, how impactful their lives have been, how essential they are to us, to our families, to our culture, to our country and the world. In Jesus' name, amen.